in this video uh, we will be dealing with the Fourier transforms so we already know that when my signal is continuous time in nature and it is non periodic so I can write it here it is continuous time and aperiodic then we go for uh, Fourier transform that is uh, we go for transform analysis of uh, the time domain signal now what we are converting here is we are converting a signal in time domain to its corresponding frequency domain now since it is continuous time signal it is the time which is involved is t not n as in case of the discrete time signal so we are converting x of t that is continuous time and non periodic signal that is a periodic signal into its counterpart that is frequency domain signal of x of t by taking Fourier transform now this is the Fourier transform equation and it is called as analysis equation and this is called inverse Fourier transform equation that is called synthesis equation so analysis equation will give you a uh, relationship between the time, do time domain signal and the multiplication of time domain signal with a complex exponential and in order to get a frequency domain signal of the same so this is my input signal which is continuous and non periodic I'm multiplying it with a complex exponential we know that e power minus j theta is what cos theta plus uh, minus j sin theta so if I multiply a continuous time signal with a complex exponential I get the Fourier transform of it now if I want to get get back x of t from the Fourier transform signal this is the equation used it is 1 by 2 pi integration minus infinity see here the limit of integration since I am integrating with respect to t here it is t is equal to minus infinity to t is equal to here I am integrating with respect to omega so it will be omega is equal to minus infinity to omega is equal to plus infinity so this is the equation wherein I already presume that I have x of j omega that is a Fourier transform of continuous time signal x of t and I multiply it with a positive exponential complex exponential e power j omega t and if I integrate with respect to the limit omega uh, by taking 1 by 2 pi dividing it by 1 by 2 pi I get my original signal back that is x of t so if I, I if I have x of t I will get x of j omega and if I have x of j omega I can get x of t back so x of t and x of j omega form a Fourier transform pair that means from x of t I can get x of j omega and from x of j omega I can get x of t that means they are reversible now one thing you need to notice here is the input signal x of t is represented by small x and the transformed version of it is represented by the capital X now this uh, there is a sufficient condition but not the necessary condition uh, for the Fourier transform to exist that is called directly criteria it says that if you integrate the input that is x of t the continuous time signal over minus infinity to plus infinity and take the modulus of it and integrate it with respect to t this value this integral value if it is less than infinity then only the Fourier transform of x of t exists that is the meaning of directly criteria okay that means my uh, input is that is continuous time signal is absolutely integrable okay uh, when we uh, come across the discrete time signal we say that it is absolutely summable but here it is absolutely integrable now we have already come across uh, that if you have x of t and how do you convert x of, uh, convert it to x of j omega is uh, by using analysis equation and by synthesis equation we get back x of t uh, from x of j omega here omega is your 2 pi f or 2 pi by t uh, angular frequency and this is fundamental t is fundamental period now this uh, continuous time Fourier transform exhibits uh, different properties so properties are listed here and I'll be proving some of the properties here uh, one is linearity that means if I give 
uh, input has weighted sum of two or more signals see here, here I have given only one signal and I found out the Fourier transform of it if I give the input has weighted sum of two or more signals what is the response when I take the Fourier transform of it that is given by linearity property then uh, time shift property says that if there is a shift in the input then what is the shift in the uh, I mean what is the change in its output that is frequency domain signal that is shown by time shift frequency shift is if you multiply the, your input by uh, complex exponential what do you get at the output time scaling is you multiply your input by uh, you scale your input by some factor right we have seen this scaling expansion and compression frequency differentiation that means if you if you differentiate the Fourier transform what do you get that is given by this um, property called as frequency differentiation and time differentiation that means you are differentiating x of t convolution as I have given the primary example of uh, advantages of going for frequency domain analysis is uh, I have taken the example of convolution uh, theorem that is convolution in time domain becomes multiplication in frequency domain then you have modulation that is multiplication in multiplication in time domain becomes convolution in frequency domain Th this is just the uh, opposite of convolution theorem and Parseval theorem which gives us a relationship between uh, the energy of the signal and uh, its power spectral density then there is one more special theorem only restricted to Fourier transfer continuous time Fourier transform that is called duality which is very handy in solving some problems